Dear all, welcome to today's session on the book of Genesis. Today we are going to study on the first book of Genesis from our Old Testament survey. So before I could start our session, I will just uh, present the notes from our PDF book. I hope everyone have downloaded this uh, PDF version of a textbook. Have all of us downloaded the book? Yes, yes, Master. Thank you. I'm just trying to present. Okay, the introduction of the book of Genesis. Before we could start, the five, the first five books of the Bible are called the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch is derived from this Greek word, which simply means the five books or the five scrolls. The Jews refer to them as the Torah or the law. The first five books can be divided into unequal parts. The first part being the Genesis and the second part being from Exodus to Deuteronomy. I also request you all to keep, uh, please keep your Bible and a notepad side by side so that as we share, as we study, you all can make a note of that. And the book of Genesis narrates the creation story, the spread of sin, and also records the ancestral origin of Israel. We see God interacting with Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and many other people in this first book. Whereas Exodus to Deuteronomy recount the salvation of Israel from Egypt and their journey in the wilderness and the law given to Moses by God on the holy mountain. Well, these four books are a mixture of narrative and law set during the time of Moses and we see his story from his birth to his death in this book. Let's survey <clears throat> this book of Genesis. So if we keep our Bibles open, it will be good for us to survey through this book. Before we could study the background of this book, we see, uh, we see uh, Genesis is the first book of the Pentateuch, that is the first five books. And it is also the first book in the Hebrew Bible. And this book has been very important to the Hebrew, to the uh, uh, to the Jewish people and also for our Christians. So Genesis is the first book of the Pentateuch. The word Genesis comes from a Greek word called Genesis, which means beginning or origin. So the Bible as a whole is God's progressive revelation of himself and his desire to have a covenant-based relationship with mankind. The Old Testament is the first step that God takes in this progressive revelation. So in the Old Testament, we see that God created the whole universe and finally he created man in his own image. Now, he created man to have the fellowship, have a relationship with him and to be his representative on this earth. And man sinned and the very relationship that uh, it was designed between man and God was broken. He lost his God-given position and all of creation was marred. However, through this man, God multiplied the human race. We see that the fallen humanity continued to rebel against God and his ways. God chose different people at different times to fulfill his plan and purpose. 
One of them was Abraham. God made a covenant with Abraham to make his descendant into a great nation. And we see that in Genesis chapter 12. And uh, give them a land of their own as promised. God chose his descendants, blessed them, redeemed them from their oppressors, gave them the law through Moses and prepared them to enter the promised land and eventually conquered the land with God's help and settled there under the leadership of different judges. The chosen by God to rule over the nation and protect them from the enemies. Over time, a kingdom was formed and Israel's king were appointed by God, but not long after. Israel was divided into two kingdoms. One was Northern Kingdom and the other was Southern Kingdom. Both these kingdoms were destroyed eventually and the people were taken into captivity because of their unfaithfulness to the covenant of God had established with them. Throughout this time, we see that God has been warning his people by different means, especially through his prophets. Sadly, the messages they shared were often rejected and their lives were endangered. See, some of our friends have joined. Let me admit them. Thank you. So God remained faithful even uh, while his people were in exile. And as he promised, he brought the Israelites back to the land. God showed his people a shadow of the coming Messiah, Jesus Christ, who would come to deliver his people. And in fact, the whole world, the entire Old Testament paves the way for the Messiah. As we study book after book, we'll see how the shadow of the Messiah has been predicted in that particular book. As we survey the Old Testament, we will understand that God and his redemptive work is a great way. We will also see his relationship with his chosen people prior to the cross. The law, which is, uh, which is from the book of Genesis to the book of Deuteronomy, that is the book of Pentateuch, the history books. Again, from Joshua to Esther and the Book of Wisdom, from Job to Song of Solomon, and the prophetic books from, from the Book of Isaiah to the last book of the Book of Malachi. Every book of the Old Testament was inspired by the Holy Spirit and revealed to us the, the character or, and the nature of God. With this, we see uh, uh, we see a diagram in our notes that the book focuses on the four events and on the four people. The four events are from the creation, from chapter one. We see in chapter one talks about the creation, uh, and in chapter three talks about the fall of the man. Chapter six talks about the flood, uh, the complete uh, wash of the human race, and uh, by grace, how God saved uh, only the Noah and his family. And in chapter 10, we, he talks about the nation. And in chapter 12, we see the call of Abraham. And in chapter 25, we see how God leads Isaac with the promises, what he made with his father, Abraham. And 27, Jacob has how God has been faithful, even when uh, Jacob sinned and went away, you know, how God restores him back. The wrestle with Jacob and how God restored him back and he renamed him from Jacob to Israel and uh, and in the last few chapters from 37 to 50 we see uh, we see the life of Joseph the the situation the circumstances that he went through and how uh, how God brought uh, how God blessed Joseph and we uh, the first book uh, from uh, chapter 1 to 12 talks about the human race and chapter 12 to chapter 50 talks about the Hebrew race so with this we will move on uh, move on to discuss about the author Moses 
some believe uh, some believe genesis was the work of several authors over many years even some who believed moses wrote this uh, exodus to deuteronomy but what does the scripture say the scripture says that moses wrote this book that is uh, uh, in the uh, in the old testament and also in the new testament the scripture clearly mentions moses that he was the author of this first five books a few of the points we see are that during uh, his year in the egyptian royal family moses could have been a skilled writer and historian uh, because he had uh, the knowledge of the egyptian terms and customs and he also may have had the access to the historical books through which he could record it we see this in exodus chapter 2 verse 1 to 11 and also in the new testament acts 722 and uh, the various places we also see jesus saying that moses has recorded so jesus himself said that moses recorded so this is one of the witness that we could take that moses was the author of the first five books of the pentateuch the, the date and location though the exact time of moses uh, wrote genesis is unknown it is likely near the close of the first 40 years when he was still in the egyptian court and had access to the access to the historical documents maybe during that time and the scholars suggest that it may be in uh, 1446 bc and the very purpose of this book we see to reveal the origin and purpose of the universe of life and humanity to show the personal relationship to the covenant making nature of god and it also records the early history of the hebrew people revealing the uh, revealing jesus as the messiah we also see the general purpose uh, to furnish an account of the beginning of all things genesis records 11 beginnings and they are given below the beginning of the earth has the first point is the beginning of the earth as man's habitation and then we see the beginning of the human race in chapter 1 verse 26 and also we see in chapter 2 verse 4 to 25 um i just look for does the scripture says in the meanwhile i also request you all to uh, open up your bible and take up each verse so i will take up the first point verse somebody else <clears throat> take up the next verse genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27 the next person so that when we study the scripture <clears throat> then we would know what exactly the the word of god talks about each and every point so i'm reading genesis chapter 1 verse have everyone turned your bibles to genesis chapter 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and chapter 2 verse 30 no chap no same chapter verse 30 also to every beast of the earth to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the earth is in which there is life 
I have given every green herb for food and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So we see that how God created. God uh, created the heaven and earth and all the habitations that man needs. Even before God could create man, he created everything that is needed for the man. The next point is the beginning of the human race. Can one of us take chapter 1, verse 26, 27? Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our own image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, all over the earth, and all over the creatures that move along the ground. Thank you. Thank you. So what does the scripture talk about? Does it talk about let us? When it said let us, who is that us? Ma'am, I think Trinity. God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yes, you're right. You're right. And even in the first point, we see in verse 3, verse 3 it said, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. What do you think? Is it very important for us to speak out? God don't have to, you know, say. The minute he thinks, things can be created. Or maybe the very look of God, uh, you know, pointing out certain things. He has the power to bring things into existence. When he has uh, so much, he is... Uh, so much power. Why is it in verse 3 it says, God said? All the creations, you see, everywhere, God calls things into existence. Do you think it is important for us to speak and call things into existence? God teaching us the importance of calling things into existence? Class, you all can unmute and speak up. I think God was calling out uh, words basically because he was bringing Jesus Christ into the mix. Because when you read further in the Bible, it says that the word was with God and that word was Jesus Christ. So I think he was putting Jesus Christ into the mix. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yes. ma'am. In that, in that text too, I also see faith mixed with action. Um, God thinking his creation is an act of faith in himself and speaking it out is the action he took on the faith. So faith must always come with action to create what we are thinking, to go create what our thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're right. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, yes, we have many points that we can discuss as we go. And it's a good thing. Yes, God wants us to speak out. There is power when we speak out. There is power because in Proverbs 18.21, we see that death and life lies in the power of your tongue. And we shall have the fruit of it. So it is very important of every word that we speak. We have to be a person who calls things into existence, as, uh, as uh, Paul says in the book of Romans. Uh, you know, because very clearly, God's, uh, you know, uh, uh, Genesis records in verse 3 saying, God said, God, though uh, God saw the darkness, if you read uh, uh, verse 2, you see, the earth was without form. It says the earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. So there was darkness, there was void, it was uneven. And the spirit of God was just hovering over this place, but not doing anything. He was waiting for God's command. The minute God said God looked at darkness and he called upon light. 
God looked at darkness and he called upon light. What is the opposite of darkness? Light. Yes. So what is the opposite of our trouble, of our, uh, of our uh, trial that we each of us are facing in our life? Are we calling things opposite to what we are facing today? Or we are talking about our trouble, our situation, our problem every time we go through it. Are we talking about our sickness? Or, uh, or are we claiming our healing? Are we talking about the curse which is coming from the generation to generation over us? Or are we talking about God's blessing in our life? What are we talking about? We need to look into it because our God is a God who calls things into existence. And our words have power. When God saw darkness, he called light. When we see sickness, we need to speak healing. When we see curse, we need to speak blessing. When we see something um, not uh, not right or not well situation, we are going through a season of tunnel in our life, speak God's word to have your breakthrough because the word of God says that you are more than an overcomer. And when we speak, we see the power of God move. We see the Holy Spirit move because we have released the word of God. We have released his promise in and through us. Okay, and we'll see the power of God move. And we can discuss about this much later at the time of discussion. The third point we can move. And if anyone is ready with third point, the beginning of Sabbath, chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Genesis chapter 2. Please go ahead, any one of you. Genesis chapter 2, verses 3. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So what did God do? He rested. He rested. So it is so important for us even to have rest so that we will not get burned out. We need to rest and don't have to feel like we are lazy if you're resting one day. No, God expects us to rest. God, The rest is not needed for God, but God shows, sets an example for us. Though I work for all the seven days, on the seventh day, six days, on the seventh day, God rested. Okay, and the fourth point. Fourth point, can anyone else read? So the Lord, Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Wait. Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. Then uh, the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> so what does the scripture say, teach us about? The Lord created Adam and Lord created Eve. Lord was the creator. Man just did not exist with uh, through a cell. Okay, but God created man from the dust. He created them. He breathed life into them. Okay, we are created by God, by his image, by his likeness, we have been created. Anyone would like to share what is their point of view on this verse?
and also it talks about marriage talks about marriage lord <clears throat> you know uh, he brings them together he does not want man to be alone but then he creates a suitable partner and um, you know he brings them together and he and uh, adam looks at eve and says <clears throat> this is now the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called women because she was taken out of man there was a man and therefore man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one, one flesh. flesh and they were both naked and the man and his wife and were not ashamed okay so what god is saying is god has brought these two together so in, in in marriage we see that you know when they get married a couple gets married and you know, uh, uh, they need to uh, there are no more two individual they have been made one they have been united in christ uh, you know united in god as a threefold god so we see that in uh, in the scripture again and again saying that uh, uh, a man and women are been united as one flesh they no more to individual but they have been united and god has been there with them as a threefold god with this we will move on to the next point chapter 5 uh, fifth point the beginning of sin chapter 3 verse 1 to 7 chapter 3 verses 1 to 7 now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the lord god had made he said to the woman did god really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden the woman said to the serpent we may eat fruits from the tree in the garden but god did not say or what god did say you must not eat fruits from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you may die fourth you will not surely die the serpent said to the woman for god knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like god knowing good and evil when the woman when the woman saw that fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and was desirable for gaining wisdom she took some and ate it she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it when the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked so they sewed the fig leaves together and made covering for themselves thank you thank you said so we see the beginning of sin how did this sin begin there are three points that we could see in this verse what are they what led eve to sin what are the three points that we see in the scripture reading that led eve to sin we need to keep up a little faster because the time is running we have 15 20 minutes more okay we see the three points as the lust of eyes the lust of flesh taste and the pride of life you see these three things led eve to sin even today in our life if you see if something has led us to sin it may involve these three lust of eyes lust of flesh and pride of life so we need to be watchful we need to be very careful when we are been enticed with any of these things okay due to time we will not get into in detail of each and every point because we need to cover this whole chapter i will just uh, go through and wherever required i will just briefly explain it uh, uh, but i would recommend you to do your bible study i would recommend you to go through each and every chapter and read for a better understanding of the scripture the sixth point here it says the beginning of redemptive revelation we see uh, god revealing the plan what he has in store then we see in the seventh point the beginning of sacrifice what was the first sacrifice there 
chapter 3 verse 21 the lord god made garment of the skin for adam and his wife and clothed them so that was the first sacrifice for, to make a tunic for them god used the skin of what skin of an animal so god had to kill that animal to get them to clothe them so there was a covering to cover the nakedness god had to kill and now it was just a covering but then what was the redemptive uh, revelation the sacrifice jesus will be our sacrifice in the new testament in the old testament we see every sacrifice that was uh, made for the sin they they gave a lot of sin offering right we will study in detail when we come to the book of leviticus okay it was just the covering of sin but then in the new testament we see the complete forgiveness of sin washing of that sin is through the sacrifice of the only begotten son jesus christ this will go to the point 8 the beginning of godless civilization how people rebelled against god and what was the result of their rebel because the bible says the scripture says the wages of the wages of sin is death the rebel the the people who rebelled against god had to face the consequence of their very action with this we will move on to ninth point the beginning of the nation god called a family out noah and through noah the uh, the generation spread and increased and how god called through jacob though he sinned and he deceived his own brother but god chose jacob to bring out a nation and god god renamed jacob as israel we see that in that chapter at the beginning of language new languages got introduced to scatter the people to all over the earth so that they can multiply and in 11th point we see the beginning of the hebrew race the covenant people god had a covenant he he, he made his first covenant with abraham sorry not the first covenant he made it before that itself he made a covenant with abraham he chose abraham and he made a covenant and abraham just believed on god and how he stepped out or uh, you know out of his father's house in faith on this god just the voice abraham just heard the voice and that's why he was called the father of faith with these general purposes we also have some specific purpose that or uh, the origin of the nation of israel as god's peculiar people from whom the redeemer would come in the genealogy of jesus in the book of matthew we see uh, the genealogy of jesus completely from uh, uh, you know it starts from abraham son of david it reads in matthew chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 the book of the genealogy of jesus christ the son of david the son of abraham abraham begat begot isaac it starts from abraham so god brought the origin from then on the unique features we see that genesis introduces a single most important issue of life the problem of sin and evil and began and begins to show the solution of that problem god as a solution to every problem he introduces three of the four god given institution foundational to human history marriage human government and uh, the chosen nation of israel the four institution the church is introduced which is also we see that in detail in matthew chapter 16 
It also records about the Abrahamic covenant, the first of the three most important unconditional covenant in the Old Testament, and the other two are the Davidic covenant and the new covenant. We will be studying further about the Davidic covenant and the new covenant. For now, we will study on the Abrahamic covenant, the Abrahamic blessings. What are the Abrahamic blessings? Can we turn to Genesis chapter 12? Now the Lord said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. And I will bless the, those who bless you, and I will curse who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. There are five points we see in Abrahamic covenant. We see that God calls a single person and he says, I will make you a great nation. Just the way God promised, did God bring out a nation out of Abraham's generation? Though Abraham walked out of his father's house having nothing, but God said, I will bless you and make your name great. His name has been so great that still we are able to talk about him. And there is a covenant, Abrahamic covenant is still active in us through Jesus Christ in us. The third point we see is I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. We are the uh, inheritance of this Abrahamic blessing. Whoever blesses us will be blessed. And the last point we see, the fifth point we see is, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. We all inherit this covenant, this Abrahamic covenant in us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We all have the access of this covenant. With this, we will move on to the comparison with the other Bible books. Uh, Genesis has been compared with Revelation as it records humanity's, Genesis records human, humanity's first rebellion against God. And Revelation records the final rebellion. And we also see uh, Genesis records the entrance of sin and Revelation records its exist. So in the same way, there's other comparison in the following books of Roman, John, uh, John uh, and John, chapter 1 John, and also in Galatians. We need to read each and every chapter to know the comparison. This may be one of the questions we've asked for our exam. And uh, the outline of Genesis. The outline of Genesis is very important so that we know each and every chapter. It talks about, oh, we see chapter 1 to 2 talks about the creation. It talks about the fall in chapter 3. And uh, 4 to 5 talks about the fall to the flood. And then uh, we see 6 to 9, the flood and the flood to Abraham in chapter 10 to 11. In chapter 12, we see the call of Abraham. In chapter 25, we see the blessed, the covenant son, Isaac, in this life story. And then we read about the life of Jacob and the circumstances that he went through deceiving his own brother and what he went through at the uh, at Laban's his father-in-law's house. And uh, later we see Joseph, how Joseph went through the difficult season in his life uh, and how God was with Joseph at um, uh, you know, uh, Joseph became so prosperous. What was the reason that Joseph became so prosperous? Can anyone say? Ma'am, because the hand of the God was upon him. Yes, that's how Joseph could overcome many obstacles. And, you know, uh, uh, and the uh, Bible also records that Joseph ran away from Potiphar's wife. How could uh, Joseph run away? Because the hand of God was upon Joseph. God was with Joseph and Joseph was blessed. And whatever he did, whatever he did, he was a man of blessing. And that's how God lifted him. 
and uh, throughout his difficult time when he was uh, in trial uh, in uh, you know he was persecuted by his own brother he was sold and then he was a slave in potiphar's house and then uh, in the prison in the uh, under the uh, in the pharaoh's prison wherever he was god was with him god was with him and god led him and during every season bible does not say that joseph murmured joseph thought ill about his brother or joseph uh, you know uh, there was no negative emotions but every time he believed on the dream that god gave him saying that god will raise me up god will lift me up this season is not the same he will change he believed on the promises of god just the way abraham believed just as how joseph believed god lifted him up for god lifted him up god blessed him god revealed the secrets of that kingdom secret of the uh, pharaoh's dream to joseph god gave him the wisdom to have the seven year uh, that's how we need to have a relationship with god when we walk with god when we have when we develop this relationship with god our god reveals the secret things to us a god is a god who tells first who reveals first and then he does if you see even in the life of abraham god first revealed him what god has a plan for him and how god is going to execute it god may not have told how he's going to execute the execution process but he gave him the final picture and abraham believed abraham believed and righteousness was credited into him when we believe we see god's grace been credited into our life in different ways that has been needed for us just like how god spoke to uh, uh, joseph through a dream uh, reveal his future the plan that god had in store for joseph and then god again spoke to uh, joseph in dream and revealed the secret of the dream of pharaoh for him and he also enabled him to interpret that dream the wisdom that courage comes from god because of the relationship that joseph had with god he never sinned throughout the time he could be strong even in the uh, uh, even during the season of the trial or during the time of difficulty because god was with joseph we need to have that relationship that we can pursue what god wants us to do and god is a god who reveals things to us god is a god of wisdom he increases us in our wisdom so that we will be a blessing to many because that's the promise that's the covenant blessing that you and i have through jesus christ he wants to raise us he has called us he has set us apart and he wants to have a relationship with us that we may excel in every area of our life and we may be a blessing to the nation and to the nations and this is the blessing that we have and i would also encourage you to go through the outline of genesis so that we can in detail study about the many topics that has been listed in the book we have also the scriptures listed there the chapter wise i would encourage you all to please go through it and we lastly we will study on the portrayal of or the shadow of jesus christ in the book of genesis adam is a type of christ adam is a type of christ we see in romans chapter 5 verse 14 can any of us please turn to romans chapter 5 verse 14 and read nevertheless death reigned from the time of adam to the time of moses even over those who did not sin by breaking a command as did adam who was a pattern of the one to come so if sin reigned through one man 
if death reigned through one man, we have life eternal through one man. And who is that one man who died on our behalf? Jesus. Jesus. We see that in verse 12 onwards, if we can read. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned. For under the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from man, from Adam to Moses even over those who had not sinned, according to the likeness, the transgression of Adam, who was a type of him who has to, who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense, but for if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Through one man's death, we are in verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. So if through one man sin entered the world, through one man we have been saved. That is through the blood of Jesus Christ. He died on the cross to save each of us who believes in him. And we have the eternal life, which has been said in John 3, 16. So with this, so Adam was the uh, shadow of Christ in this book. We also see, uh, you know, the skin of slain of a beast. And uh, that also shares the atonement of Christ. And Melchizedek is another type of Christ in the book of Hebrew. We read that because in, Mel uh, in the Old Testament, Melchizedek was the high priest uh, to whom Abraham offered his offering. And we also see Joseph lifted from the pit to throne. How Joseph was humiliated before exaltation. In the same way, um, we see the life of Joseph is a picture of Jesus Christ. Both are the objects of the special love of their fathers and both hated by their brothers. Both were rejected and the rulers over the brothers. Both are conspired against and sold for a silver. And both are condemned. And though they were innocent, and both are raised from humiliation to glory by the power of God. So the book of Genesis is not a textbook of history of mankind, but is concerned only with events that bear directly upon the selective plan of God in his redemptive work. So with this, we end this book of Genesis. And if there's any of y'all would like to share Anything about this book of Genesis, you can go ahead. We have five minutes of this. I think it's out of time. But still, you can share if there's anything before we could end this class in a time of prayer. Is there anyone in the class who would like to share or add anything to the book of Genesis? Thank you, Pastor Diana. It was uh, really good to have uh, an outline of Genesis. And it's, uh, yeah, there's nothing for us to add, for uh, like from my part, nothing else to add. Yeah, it was really good to just go through those uh, chapters. It reminds of all the <clears throat> all the characters and the stories and how God worked in their lives. Uh, and thank you for those encouragements that you shared in between. Yeah, thank you. may God bless you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you.
and uh, yes dear friends i would like to request you all to read the life of people because it is very important to know the faith that abraham carried when he was asked to offer his son isaac you know we can talk about many stories of these people in their life but then due to time constraint i have to restrict but i would encourage you to read how um, isaac in chapter 26 he tries to follow just what his father did but then god says no you you don't have to go to Egypt during famine, but then I will bless you in the place where you are. Uh, uh, you know, from uh, each and every character when we study, you see God interacting with that person and he's continuously being a God of blessing. The same way God is ready to interact with us when we have a relationship with him. And always remember, God is a God of blessing. God has a plan for us just the way he had planned for each of them. Okay. With this, we will in the class with a word of prayer. Dear God, we thank you. We love you. We praise you. You are the God who is seen. You are the God Alpha and Omega. You are the same God even today. You are a God who desires to have a relationship with us. Lord, we thank you the way you chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The same way, Lord, you have chosen each one of us, Lord. You have called us. You have set us apart. You are building and preparing us to have this covenant relationship with you, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you have a plan for us, plan to prosper us and give us a future. Lord, we thank you. Lord, help us to have faith like Abraham. Help us to uh, uh, perceive in the way that you have called us, Lord. Increase that perseverance in us. Increase that endurance in us, Lord. Just the way you you wear with Joseph, Lord. We pray that you will be with each of us, Lord, so that we may not fall, we may not give in to the temptation that comes our way, Lord, but then we will stand strong and endure it and, and, uh, and receive the reward of that endurance of our Thank you, Lord, for you are our God. We are enriched by the blood of Jesus. We are enriched in this new covenant because you are with us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who abides in us forever. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for joining in today's class. Amen. See you all tomorrow. And we will study on the book of Exodus. I would request you all to please go through the chapter. Okay. Thank you. Uh, God Pastor, bless can you. Also, you uh, Thank can you, can you also re upload the notes, please? Load the notes, please. Okay, you want the notes to be re uploaded? To be re -uploaded? Yeah, it was. Uh, not available to when you on the Thank you. Thank you. Even I'm not Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will re-upload. I will re-upload the notes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. I just wanted to share um, something. Uh, 